Um, welcome to uh, unit testing plugins. Uh, my name is Brian Petty. Uh, a little bit about myself. I've worked for Bluehost. Uh, they've hired me on as part of the open source outreach team. Uh, and uh, on that team, I'm a developer who works on and submits up patches and bugs up to WordPress core. Um, so I spent a lot of my day uh, over at Bluehost actually working with the developers over at Automatic, uh, working on WordPress itself. Um, now, uh, when I found out that Brian had a uh, presentation uh, just before me here on writing plugins, I decided it would be great to uh, see if, since I wanted to do a, a talk on testing plugins, that I would actually write tests for his plugin. So now that you've seen him write his plugin, uh, now we get to look over actually adding unit tests into his plugin. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, get started in here. Um, so those of you wondering, uh, what are unit tests exactly here? Um, unit tests are tests that verify the, uh, the smallest pieces of code um, in your repository. They call them units of code uh, to make sure that they work as they're intended. Uh, now unit tests, um, when you write them up, you write them up in the same language that you've written the plugin in. Uh, you usually include them right in your plugin to, to begin with there. And uh, when you write them, the idea is that you keep these uh, small functions, very small functions that just test one little thing in, in your plugin. And you need to make sure that they run fast um, uh, because you plan on adding a whole lot of them and you want people to continue running them to make sure that there are changes in your, uh, in your plugin continue to work. Um, unit tests are meant to be uh, reliable. Um, so uh, a lot of things uh, people tend to do is they think, all right, well, if I want to make sure that my functions in my plugin uh, work with just about any input, I'm going to go ahead and just generate random strings to test this function with. And uh, that, that's a horrible mistake. Don't do that. Um, instead, you, want, you will want to test the, uh, the edge the edge cases of all your functions in your plugins to make sure they handle invalid input, to make sure that they handle um, uh, you know, numbers that are just off, the, the off by one indexes in your plugins, uh, things like that. But you want your unit tests to run the same way every time to make sure that they always run that way. Um, and the last point here is that your unit tests need to be flexible. Um, your unit tests in your, in your plugin here, uh, you know, your plugin's gonna run in several different configurations that are well out of your control and bounds, especially if you, you know, you're uploading up into the uh, WordPress plugin repository. You can expect that your plugin's gonna run in PHP versions 5.2 still, 5.3, and even some 5.4 systems that have been rolling out. Uh, you will also see your plugin, you want to make sure that your plugin works in versions of WordPress from version 3.0 or 3.1 to 3.2, 3.3, dep depending on how far back you want to go. And uh, maybe after this talk, you'll actually want to uh, support even later versions or even, even older versions of WordPress because uh, you'll, you'll start to find that this is easier to do with unit tests. Um, your unit test can also be set up to test your plugin in the development version of WordPress. So you just do a quick update on there, just uh, you, know, you check out the latest code from WordPress, and you can run your unit test right up against that with every change that's done on WordPress. And I'm gonna kinda show you how that's done through here. Um, so let's hit up the next here. Um, so yeah, some of the benefits of unit tests um, you detect problems early. Uh, when your tests are all automated and you can run them with a simple one-line command without having to have to dig into it. How, how many of you actually go in, uh, how many of you develop plugins here? Let's get a raise of hands. And uh, how many of you have written unit tests for your plugins? No one? <laughs> that's, that's about what I've seen. <laughs> um, yeah, when... Uh, uh, when you go in and write these unit tests, they're fully automated. Do any of you that do write your plugins, do you end up going through the administration panel? Every time you make a change in your plugin, I, I assume you'll go through the admin panel. 
You'll make sure that the settings all still work. And you'll do a little bit of testing before you push it up to the, the WordPress plugin repository. Um, but this, this takes time. Um, you, you, you'll be in the admin, and if you've got a lot of features and a lot of options in your plugin, maybe even your theme, unfortunately, you know, get rid of the options in your theme. Uh, your plugin can be tested. Uh, your theme probably can be too, but uh, we haven't gotten to that point yet. Um, but when you have these tests all written in automated unit tests, you can run one command and it runs all of your tests in, in less than five minutes, uh, most efficiently less than 30 seconds, hopefully. Um, and, uh, and you don't have to lift a finger. You don't have to hit up any pages. All the same tests are run exactly the same way. Um, so this, this also gives you the chance to uh, write more flexible code in your plugins. So uh, um, let me kind of give you an example of, of what I mean by that. Um, when, when you have a test that tests every function in your plugin, you're going to be less worried about whether or not a change to your plugin is going to break something else in your plugin. Um, so uh, you know if you'll you'll be you'll be less uh, worried about making changes, making you know refactoring code, making sure it looks a lot better, that it runs faster, um, and uh, and you have your tests to fall back on. So if you break anything, your tests are going to let you know. Um, so uh, the other thing that lets you do is do faster release cycles. Um, uh, getting your updates out on the WordPress repository don't take nearly as long because you don't have to you go through this whole round of testing and then you know you're expecting your users to go out and test your plugin for a bit before you you know release the final version. Um, um, so another another benefit of unit tests is they serve as a living specification of your uh, of your plugin. Um, your unit tests cover every feature in your function, well beyond anyone who's actually using your plugin. And generally, your unit tests can help you um, help you see what your plugin provides, and uh, how it should work, and uh, you know whether or not you throw one number into this other function and what should come out at the other end. And it's it's documented in your unit tests, and you can you can read your unit tests almost in plain English. And uh, we'll kind of show you that as well. Um, and the last point here on backwards compatibility is that when you do changes to your plugin, and uh, and uh, maybe maybe your older version of the plugin supported older versions of WordPress, um, when you wrote that original unit test, it expected one value in there that you used to support. And if you've made changes in there, you'll be uh, your unit test will let you know if you've broken your plugin or if you've broken WordPress by making that change. And going back to older versions, it will let you know if you've broken something. Uh, so, uh, I mean, the backwards compatibility usually makes more sense as far as the core WordPress unit tests and less so in the plugins. Um, generally, because uh, if, if WordPress has a function built into it that performs one thing, and they go in and change that function, there's still this entire repository of plugins using the old version and expecting it to run a certain way. Um, so uh, let's jump into the WordPress core unit testing framework. And I'm going to give you an overview of how it's all laid out. Uh, so we're built up on um, the WordPress core unit tests are built on top of a, a unit testing framework called PHP unit. Uh, this is a standard unit testing framework. It runs uh, pretty much everywhere, uh, Windows, Linux, Mac, and uh, just about nearly all PHP projects use this framework for their unit tests. Uh, so there's nothing out of the ordinary here. And you'll generally find that if some of you are using IDEs, uh, integrated development environments such as uh, NetBeans or Komodo or PHP Storm, um, you'll generally find that these IDEs actually have support built in for PHP unit tests, and uh, they'll provide menu options and, and GUI items to actually go through and handle automated testing when you make those changes. Um, so the WordPress core unit tests, obviously you don't see them in the WordPress checkout when you download a copy of WordPress, 
And that's because they're not contained in the WordPress uh, core code repository. Uh, we've got a separate repository up on unittest.track.wordpress.org um, for the issue tracker. And the actual code is sitting in unittest.svn.wordpress.org. Uh, so um, this just makes sure that you know, your actual live copies of WordPress on your live site do not have all these extra testing files that could potentially cause a security hole. Um, but moving on here, the core, the WordPress core unit tests, like I said, small individual tests, and the core unit tests cover 1,366 individual tests of various components within WordPress to make sure that any change that we make to WordPress does not break anything else in any of these other components. Um, and so these tests cover a wide range of components, everything from the administration panel, the uh, XML RPC for APIs, um, the, uh, the WordPress object cache internally, all the plugin functions, uh, the theme functions, they also cover hooks and filters as well. Um, so we've got, uh, we've got a general coverage of all those tests in there. Um, and I'm going to show you how to take advantage of these same 1,300 tests for your own plugin as well. Uh, um, something you should be aware of is uh, obviously WordPress is still using Subversion for their version control. Uh, we haven't switched over to Git or GitHub or anything like that. And uh, many of you, like myself, still like to use GitHub for, for our version checkouts. Um, in this case, this is one where I do recommend that you fall back and stay on using Subversion. Uh, the WordPress unit testing library contains a lot of SVN externals that point to an external copy of WordPress that it checks out, an external copy of the importers that it checks out and tests. Um, external copies of a whole bunch of themes that it runs through and tests, um, and a few other things like that. Um, uh, oh yeah, one other note to uh, here is the uh, core contributor handbook that was recently written up in the last uh, couple months here. Um, there's the URL to open up the handbook. The handbook has a page on automated testing that covers these unit tests and how to run them. Um, so if you get lost at any point, uh, that page can help you out there. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's go over some of the features of the WordPress core unit tests before I jump into actually writing unit tests for your plugins. Uh, so here we have the, our very first test uh, derived. Uh, we, we set up a basic class. We derive it from WP unit test case. And... Uh, um, we just have a very simple test here that just makes sure that the testing library itself is working correctly. Um, so we've, we've named a function test underscore test. This is a common convention you'll find in all plugins here. Uh, they always prefix with test underscore. This is how the library knows that that function needs to be run as a unit test. Um, and so some of the things that this class uh, provides when you derive from WP unit test case as opposed to the PHP unit test case is that uh, we've set up in the framework um, an automated system of every single test that you write in, in, your, uh, in your test suite here is going to be run through MySQL transactions, which will make sure that any changes to the database that your unit tests uh, make are immediately rolled back to a fresh, clean WordPress install so that the next test does not interfere with the data that's in the database from the last test. Um, the other thing it does, it automatically flushes the object cache. Uh, you know, there are some tests that might rely on, on data not being in that object cache when it first requests it. There are some tests that actually test the object cache, and they need to know that that's on a fresh, clean install. Uh, it also clears out form data, so anything that you set in your get arrays or post arrays um, for any form submissions, it will clear those out. Uh, and you do need to set those to do some testing of some form submissions. Uh, and the last thing that this provides is an interesting feature. It will skip tests that are marked with open tickets. So uh, in the WordPress issue tracker, if, uh, if, we've, if we've written an annotation on this ticket that says, you know, marks it as, uh, it's an at sign ticket and then the actual number of the ticket, 
the uh, unit testing library will go to the WordPress issue tracker. It will grab the full list of all the open tickets in the WordPress issue tracker, and uh, it, it keeps an idea of which tickets are actually still open. And if we note one of those tickets on here, it will skip the test because it knows that there's already an issue in the issue tracker about it. It's broken, we know it's broken, just don't even run the test. Um, so it will skip that. Um, and you'll notice in the, in the 1,366 tests here that uh, there's currently 70 tests right now uh, in the WordPress core issue tracker that are currently open, so it skips these 70 tests. That's completely normal and expected. Okay, so uh, one other feature of the WordPress unit testing framework is that we've provided helpers for uh, generating users, posts, categories, uh, terms, and even blogs. For those of you playing around with multi-site WordPress, you can, uh, you can quickly and easily, as you can see from some of these examples, uh, your unit test can easily create several different types of these objects using one line of code here. In this case, I've created 25 posts. I've created one page. I've created a user who it has the role of an author. And it'll just use, uh, for any values that you don't uh, specify, it'll just use some same defaults. Um, so you'll see some default strings in here. Um, and then we've created five blogs in here as well in the terms. Um, so when, when you're going in and testing these features and you need your test to generate a whole bunch of, of blog posts to, to run your test on, this is a quick way of doing it. Okay, uh, one other item that's a little hard to do when you're writing unit tests is to test any AJAX functions. They make external requests. This is typically not good for unit testing libraries because it needs to run all in the same PHP process. It can't tell what the other stuff is doing and you're not running a server when you're running these unit tests. So uh, there's no server to run a request against. Uh, the WordPress core unit tests provide this WP AJAX unit test case for those tests that need to specifically fake an AJAX request. And you can see here I'm, I'm setting those, those post values for a form submission. This is where I fake a form submission. In this case, I'm faking a, uh, a, a submission to grab the comments for a post here. And I've specified the post ID to grab the comments from and I just make that call to this handle AJAX, and it will fake an AJAX request the same way that WordPress normally would do an AJAX request, and it should come back with comments. And you'll, you'll find those, uh, those responses from the AJAX request in the uh, last response variable there. Um, okay, so now that we've covered a few of the features of the core unit tests, um, let's, let's take a look at actually testing your plugin here. Uh, we've got, um, this is all brand new functionality that we've been working on in the last couple months here. As far as I know, uh, you guys are the first audience to kind of see this architecture in action to see how we can create unit tests in this way. Um, so uh, we don't even have this up in the WordPress repositories just yet here. Um, so uh, you can see from the link up here, up on my GitHub page, I have a repository called WordPress Plugin Tests, and it contains a skeleton of, of files that you can just uh, copy straight into your plugin root directory, and you immediately have testable functions. Um, so this will, this will get you started very quick and fast. Um, so the only steps to getting this set up is that you copy that bootstrap test file, the PHP unit XML file, um, the bootstraps file will, will set up your plugin and uh, it will call into the, uh, the root WordPress test, unit test library and bootstrap that as well. So it'll install a copy of WordPress and it will uh, set up everything you need to for your WordPress installation. And then the PHP unit XML file tells PHP unit where your tests live, uh, where the bootstrap is and how to run that. Um, and then last, you have your test directory. And uh, this test directory will contain all of your unit tests. All the files need to be prefixed with, uh, actually in this case, I don't think they need to be prefixed with anything. I think they can be named anything. Um, J 
generally it's, it's a good idea to prefix it with test underscore. Um, but the unit testing library will just grab all the PHP files in that directory and I believe any subdirectories as well. So you can organize your tests in any way that you'd like to. And it will run each of those tests. All right, so um, this is one thing. For the existing yeah. It creates a brand new installation. So um, when you do set this up, remember to create a brand new repository. Do not run this on a live WordPress blog. It will delete out all your tables. It will clear everything out. I create a whole new test repository, but you don't need to set up. You don't need to set up a web server at all. Um, you don't need to set up Apache or or. Uh, IIS or any other web servers for this. Uh, your unit test can run completely without a web server. But y you, you definitely do need to make sure you get this in a blank new database. Um, I'm glad you asked that because that needs to be very clear. Um, so uh, since this is still very new here, um, it's not terribly hard to get the bootstrap file set up for your plugin. The only thing that you need to change in this file, in this bootstrap test file, when you copy it into your plugin, is to add in your plugin slug and your main PHP file so that it knows where your plugin needs to be loaded from. Uh, it would call into WordPress functions to figure this out, but then we would be calling into code we haven't tested. So uh, it's, it's good to specify your plugin file there. All right, so I've got an example plugin set up, and here's where we're going to go back to Brian Rogers' plugin and uh, write some tests for it. Uh, so uh, if you want to look at the example in here, the code's all up on GitHub. It's under the WP slider captcha. I've got a fork of it. You can look at Brian's original. I don't have his, I don't have these tests merged into his yet, so you will have to check out this one. Um, after we've got uh, our plugin set up with these bootstrap files. Um, and we've got the bootstrap file itself configured for the plugin. We're actually ready to start testing. Uh, this, uh, this requires, when I said go back to using SVN for the WordPress test repository, the way you set this up is you check out the WordPress uh, unit test subversion repository itself up on unittest.svn.wordpress.org. Check out the trunk, uh, and here I've got a copy of it in the WordPress test folder. Uh, that's my check out there. Um, you're going to go in that folder, and uh, I missed a slide on here, I believe, where um, you'll, you're going to need to configure the WP config file. Uh, the unit tests have one just like WordPress itself has a config file where you need to specify the database connection, the username, the password. Um, to your brand new fresh database. Uh, but once you have that config file set up in there, you copy your, uh, the unit test uh, repository, remember, contains this SVN external that checks out a copy of WordPress. It checks out the trunk copy of WordPress. So I should be clear, this is, this is, uh, this is running, this is manually running tests on the development version of WordPress, which in this case right now is the uh, 3.5 version that has yet to come out. Um, so the way that you can test your plugin in this is copy your plugin in just like you would any other WordPress installation. Toss it in WP Content Plugins and uh, you're set to go. Um, so here I've tossed that in there um, and I've changed directory over to my plugin directly because you're going to run PHP unit straight from your plugin directory. That's what's going to pick up the, the PHP unit configuration file, and that's what's going to tell it where to find everything. Um, so once it finds that, as you can see here, uh, it's detected that I have this configured. This is a single test run. This is only running in my configuration here, only with the version of PHP that I have installed on this system. Um, and uh, it sees that I want it to run as single site. If you want it to run as multi-site, you have to add in extra options, which you should probably test. Um, and then you can see it grabs the configuration and it's running some tests and I've got three tests in there. It's made two assertions and it's got one skip test. 
Um, so this is, this is going back to those skip tests again. There are certain conditions under which some tests should just, uh, uh, should just be skipped for various reasons. Either it's, a, it's an old version of PHP you know there's a problem with and you know you don't support that. Um, then you can go ahead and skip the tests. Uh, so this test has done three tests and it's done it in one second. In that one second, it has completely installed a fresh brand new copy of WordPress, loaded it up, um, initialized it, installed your plugin, run your plugin test within there and everything is in working order right there. And that's all in one second. All right, so let's look at the actual unit test that it just ran there uh, of the three tests. Um, let's see how I'm doing on time here. Um, so our first uh, test here, uh, every plugin has the init hook for the most part. I, I, I don't think I've, I'm sure there's a few plugins out there that don't use the initial uh, uh, plugin hook for uh, WordPress on doing init. Um, and as is the case with the WP slider capture plugin, it also uses an init hook. And uh, so we're gonna set up a test that makes sure that that initialization hook was actually added into WordPress. So uh, we've got a test in here, test init hook was added. Remember when you're writing these functions, uh, use as much plain English as you can when you're writing out the name of the function test underscore, and then just be as clear as possible about what you're testing. Uh, when you do get errors on this unit test, it's going to tell you there was an error with this test and it's gonna name off that function. If you see that error in there, you know immediately what is wrong and you can tell where you need to go back into the code and check to make sure that something wasn't broken in there. Um, so uh, I've done a very basic assertion here um, and you can kind of go through the PHP unit documentation and get a list of all the assertions available that you can, that you can set up. Um, in this case, I'm checking, um, I'm checking the WordPress core has a function called has filter, for those of you not familiar with it, um, to check whether or not we've got a function that's set up on a filter already without, without triggering it and uh, without anything else. I'm just checking to make sure it's there. If it is there, has filter is gonna return the priority number. Um, it's not gonna return true or false. It will return false if I don't have that hook initialized in there. If that hook doesn't exist in there, it will return false. But otherwise, it will return a priority. Um, so our test just makes sure that the number returned from has filter is greater than zero. Um, and this will make sure that the hook is actually installed. Um, so there's our first unit test, pretty simple. Um, couple lines of code, because I had to break it down to make it easily readable, but uh, just really one line of code to set up a simple test. Uh, when you set up these uh, unit tests, you generally, uh, you can set up multiple assertions, uh, so you can check a whole number of things in one function. Uh, it's generally not recommended to do that though. Uh, it makes it a lot harder when there's an actual error with the unit test. You can't tell uh, where the actual error was. It's a little harder to tell. You know it's in this function, but you don't entirely know which assertion it was. Um, and it, you know, it kind of, it makes it, it just makes it a lot harder to kind of tell where those errors are. Um, so let's look at another example here. And this one's a fun one because uh, um, I just noticed that Brian uh, left an error in his code. Now we didn't see this, his plugin works, um, but it doesn't work entirely as intended. Um, so uh, in setting up some unit tests, if you remember, Brian has a function in there called WP Threshold Sanitize. What this function does is it just checks the input from the admin options panel um, when, you, when you configure that slider to be from either zero to 100 um, and he defaults to 60 here. This, uh, this function is the one that makes sure that the number provided in the administration panel is between, uh, what was it, one and 100, I believe. And, uh, and so I've set up some tests for this and the reason I kind of picked this to look at is that this is a range function. And as you can see in here, I've split this up into four different tests. 
for a single function. There's only one function here being tested, but there's several different inputs that I want to test to make sure that they work correctly. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is check those outer bound limits. The number has to be between one and 100, so I wanna see what this function returns when I pass it a zero. Uh, so if you specify a zero in the admin panel, uh, the function is set up to return back 60 as a default when you specify something out of range. Um, so I, uh, I set up an assertion. I say I'm expecting to get 60 back, and I'm going to pass in 0. Um, our second test checks the other bounds over 100. Same thing. Uh, I pass in 101 instead. Um, I also want to check to make sure that this function, you know, we could pass in a string. Who knows? Um, so I pass in a string, and uh, um, this is kind of the undefined territory of, of this plugin here. Um, so, uh, but um, the way that the function was defined, it should, uh, it should truncate that string down to a zero number. So I'm expecting zero back. Um, although the number should be from one to 100 here, so that's not quite right. Um, and then our last test is uh, just going to pass it a valid number and make sure that we get that actual valid number back. Um, so I kind of want to uh, jump into a demo here and uh, show you how these tests actually run. And uh, this is going to be quite the exercise here because I wasn't totally set up for this. Okay, so this system I just barely, before I started this talk, installed PHP unit. So if I can do that from up here in like two minutes, um, I think everyone else can, can kind of manage that. Um, so, let's see where's, there we are. Okay, so I have a checkout of the WordPress test repository, and I have the slider installed in the plugins. Um, Take a look here. We can kind of see the bootstrap test file, the PHP unit file, um, and the test directory. And if we look at the test directory, uh, we can see our two files, our slider capture file that contains a lot of those tests, and our WordPress plugin tests. And I hope I pushed this up. Let's take a look real quick. Oh no, I didn't push that up. <laughs> okay, so that's not gonna quite work. Um, you can see our first test there. I didn't push the updates in for the rest of the tests. Um, but we should at least be able to see this one test run, I guess. Uh, so let's try and run PHP unit here. Oh, no, that install did not work correctly. All right, so much for live demo. <laughs> Okay, anyway, um, I, if, you, if you run this code down as soon as I get it updated and pushed up to GitHub, you'll actually find that uh, this did find some errors in these tests specifically here. Um, Brian set up the function so that uh, he, was, he was one off on his calculations here. He's checking if the number is less than, is less than zero to set it back to... Uh, to 60, except it's less than, not less than and equals. And he's also doing the same on the opposite ends. Um, so I've tested the extreme values and I tossed in 101. And he's checking whether or not that number is greater than 101 and not greater than or equal to. Um, so when we run these tests, it will pop up errors on those first two tests. Those first two tests failed. They came back with 101 and they came back with zero and they should not have. Uh, they came back with 60 instead. Um, so uh, now that these tests are set up in here, he can go in there and fix the plugin, and uh, he'll leave the tests in here even after he fixes the bug, and he'll continue on. And he, he might do further updates to the plugin at, uh, at any point in time, and 
And he can be sure that no matter what other things that he changes in here, his unit tests will tell him whether or not he's broken this code again. So if somebody else goes through there and makes the same mistake again, the unit tests are gonna catch it before he releases an update. So that's just making sure you don't run into the same problems again. Um, once you've seen that bug once, you should never see it again. All right, so uh, I wanna go over a few extras. Um, how much time do I have left here? Three minutes, not a lot of time for questions, I guess. Um, so let me cover these ones real quick. These are just some extras, uh, things you can do with your unit test to make sure that they cover everything else that we haven't covered already by running the unit test. So remember that by, oh, okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so we've only, run, we've only run the unit test locally so far, and we've only run it on one version of PHP. That's not very good coverage on our unit tests. We haven't seen whether or not it'll break on PHP right now. I think I was running it on PHP 3. I haven't tested it on 2. I haven't tested it on 4. Um, so uh, let's go through and cover... Um, Activating your plugin, using those core unit tests within WordPress, the 1300 uh, unit tests that are set up in WordPress already to check for breaks in WordPress. Um, it, you, can, you can manage to do these tests with your plugin installed. And this is by making a simple change to the WordPress test boost, bootstrap file. This is not the same one we copied into our plugin folder. This is, uh, this is the bootstrap file for the core unit test, and you're just gonna pop this code um, with your activating your plugin right into the top of the file. Make sure it's the top and not anywhere in the middle or the bottom. Uh, it has to be before WordPress has been initialized in the unit test. Um, and this, this code right here will activate your plugin and it will run all 1300 tests with your plugin installed. So uh, if your plugin does break anything in WordPress core, these will know about it. It'll run all those same tests, and if any of those tests fail, you know that there's a problem with your plugin breaking something else within WordPress. Um, I'm sure we'll come up with another better way to, to kind of test that in the future here, but this is, this is one way to get started now. Uh, one other thing that we can look at doing is uh, setting up our unit tests with Travis CI. Travis CI is a uh, continuous integration server. Um, this server has been set up, it's freely provided. Um, in this case, uh, you have to remember, your requirements for using this though, are that your plugin has to be in Git, uh, it has to be in Git version control system, and it has to be up on GitHub, and it has to be public. So uh, this isn't gonna do much good for testing your premium plugins that are all closed source code. Um, I'd certainly advise you to open source your plugins uh, because you can run them on this system here. Um, so, I've also provided in my WordPress plugin test repository a default configuration for Travis CI. Um, and in this file, it's in the .travisci.yaml uh, YML file, um, and it contains a default configuration. Uh, if you have this file in the root of your plugin in your GitHub repository, and you visit travisci.org, I believe it is. I should have had that in the slides as well. Um, if you visit that site and you, uh, and you sign in with your GitHub account, it will show you all of your repositories and you can activate Travis CI on any of them, any of your public repositories. Uh, so I've done this with, uh, I've already activated Travis CI on the, uh, WP, um, the WP slider capture plugin. And, uh, and it will go through, uh, Travis CI has several worker processes set up with several different configurations of a whole ton of software, not just PHP, but all over the place. So they have a whole bunch of virtual machines and uh, these virtual machines are set up, one set up with PHP 5.2, another one set up with 5.3, another one set up with 5.4. Several are set up with MySQL, several are set up with uh, other databases. Um, and in my configuration here, I've enabled PHP 5.2, 5.3, 5.4. Uh, 
Um, and I'm also specifying a few extra environment variables. These, uh, these environment variables are used to specify WordPress versions and whether or not you want to test multi-site or not. Um, so I'm gonna give it a few different configurations in here. Here I'm telling it to test the development version of WordPress uh, with multi-site off and also 3.4, 3.3, 3.2. Now when Travis CI sees this, it's gonna, it's gonna create a build, uh, build matrix and this matrix is gonna be comprised of every combination of those PHP versions and those environment variables. So with this given configuration here, it's going to put together three times four, 12, it's gonna to put together 12 different environments. It's gonna run 12 different set of unit tests um, and it's gonna cover all your bases as far as that goes. So let me uh, just show you an example output here. Here I have uh, the slider capture plugin set up in Travis CI, and you can see every last one of these builds, every last configuration in the build matrix, whether or not it passed its tests, how long it took to pass the test, and here you can tell I've got right across the board on multi-site off. Uh, this is one of the first builds. Uh, there, there were some errors in, in setup here, but you can kind of see how this works from here. Um, and here I wasn't even testing PHP 5.2. Um, but as you can see, it ran all these tests in one minute and 41 seconds. In one minute and 41 seconds, it just tested everything that would have taken you weeks to test by hand. Um, so now you can start to see the power of setting up these unit tests. Um, this, is, this is covering things that you couldn't even possibly cover with, with the hours you have on hand and I'm sure everyone loves to save hours on work. All right, um, there's one other thing that I haven't covered in this, and I definitely don't have time to cover, is uh, writing more unit tests for JavaScript. Um, for anything in your, in your WordPress plugins that use JavaScript, uh, you'll want to use the QUnit framework, testing framework. This is the standard framework for jQuery, um, and uh, it's a standard for the WordPress ones too as soon as WordPress gets some, some JavaScript unit tests in for its own stuff as well. Uh, there's uh, Aaron Yorbin has actually given an excellent presentation on this. Uh, so you can go watch his presentation on WordPress TV and there's the URL there. Uh, so you can look up how uh, he handles unit testing with, J, uh, with QUnit. Uh, on JavaScript tests. Um, one other resource here, uh, there's another WordPress core developer by the name of Nikolai. He, uh, he's also worked on the, the core unit test repository with me. And uh, he's got another talk that he gave uh, about a year ago at WordCamp San Francisco. And he covers, he focuses mostly on the WordPress core unit tests. He doesn't touch plugins at all but uh, his, his presentation covers uh, more details about writing unit tests specifically and um, kind of approaches to, to writing your unit tests and how you should organize them. Uh, so I'd recommend those two. And uh, that pretty much does it for there. Five minutes, we got five minutes for questions then. All right, so uh, we have any questions then? I have a question. Yeah. Both, actually. So, how, so do you, are you only worried about going back as far as the supported versions of those? Uh, yes, yes. I am, I am only worried about uh, WordPress still supports PHP 5.2. Right. Uh, so I am concerned about that. Uh, if there's WordPress versions out there that are supported, I like to support them in my plugins. Not all plugins do that. Some plugins still require PHP 5.3, and that's where they'll want to tear out 5.2 from their configuration and just do tests on 5.3 and 5.4. So do you automate the whole, so do you test on each base and then go to the next and run the same amount of tests on a different version, so 5.2, 5.3? Yep, it's all the exact same tests that are being run, just in a slightly different environment. Okay. Um, so it's pretty good coverage on there. All right, any other questions? 
pretty complex little topic there. <laughs> all right, so I hope that now that all of you have seen these unit tests, uh, that everyone who has a plugin out there that's up on either internally, all of your premium plugins, you should go out and write these unit tests. Um, your users will thank you most of all because you're, you're making sure that they don't end up doing the testing for you on versions that you haven't been testing. Um, and uh, with that, that's where I'd like to leave it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>